using systems of equations to solve applications. For our first example here, we have during the 2017 Major League Baseball season, the Detroit Tigers played 162 games. They lost 34 more games than they won. What is the win-loss record? So when we're solving a systems of equation application problem, the first thing we want to do is identify what our variable is going to be. The variables are what you're asked about. We're asked what is the win-loss record. That means that we need to consider the wins and the losses. So let's say let x equal the win, and let's let y equal losses. Now let's read through. During the 2017 Major League Baseball season, none of that is important. The Detroit Tigers played 162 games. That's important. For the purpose of this application, we're going to say they either won or they lost. We're not going to look at ties just for the purpose of this example. So we have 162 total games. That means that if we add the number of wins plus the number of losses, we should get 162. That's our first equation. Keep reading. They lost 34 more games than they won. If they lost 34 more games than they won, that means if we take the number of games that they lost and we look at the number that they won, they lost 34 more than they won. So the number they won plus 34 is the number they lost. Now we can solve our systems of equations. We have y equals right here. So let's replace that right here. So that gives us x plus, leave your parenthesis, 162. We think we have this solved for y. See, y equals x plus 34. So let's go ahead and put that in right here where we had y. x plus x gives us 2x. Subtract the 34 from both sides. Divide both sides by 2. So we get 64. So that means that they won 64 games. But that doesn't tell us how many they lost. We still want to see how many they lost. We're told y equals x plus 34. Well, we just found out that x equals 64. 64 plus 34 is 98. So that would mean that they lost 98. Now let's do a quick check. We used this equation to find y. So we'll use this equation to do our check. So that says 64 plus 98 is hopefully 162. Well, 64 plus 98 is 162. So we got that right. Now when you're doing an application problem, you always want to explain what your result means. So we have our x value equaling 64. So that means that we have 64 wins, and our y value is 98. We said y was losses, so that means we have 98 losses. Let's try again. Number two, at a business meeting at Panera Bread, the bill for two cappuccinos and three cafe lattes was 1975. At another table, the bill for one cappuccino and two cafe lattes was 1197. How much did each type of beverage cost? So we have two things we're considering again. So we need let x and let y. Well, the information we're given is about two different types of beverages. How much did each type of beverage cost? So that's what we need our x and y to represent. So let's say x is our cappuccinos, and let's say y is the cafe lattes. So let's read again and see what we have. At a business meeting at Panera Bread, the bill for two cappuccinos and three cafe lattes was 1975. We can write that down. It says two cappuccinos, so 2x, and, so plus, three cafe lattes, so 3y, was 1975. 
Here we go. At another table, the bill for one cappuccino, so that would just be X. And, so plus, two cafe latte, so 2Y, was 11.97. Now we have our two equations. We need to solve one of these for x or y equals so that we can substitute and solve down. You could use elimination if you wanted to. I am more of a fan of substitution, so I usually use substitution, but it would not have been wrong to use elimination. And it looks like you could do that pretty easily by multiplying the bottom one by negative two. I like to use substitution, so that's what I'm going to go with. So we have x equals 11.97 minus 2y. So that means I rewrite my first equation, I leave a parenthesis where I saw the x, and then I can fill that in. I found x was 11.97 minus 2y. Here we go. If I distribute right here, we get 23.94 minus 4y plus 3y equals 19.75. Clean this up right here and let's move our 23.94 over. So that gives me negative y equals negative 4.19. So y is 4.19. There we go. Now I need to find x. Well, I know x plus 2y is 11.97. I found y is 419, so x plus 2 times 419 equals 11.97. And then we can solve this down. So that's going to give me, do your multiplication here, move this over, and x is 359. There we go. And then we can check that. We can put that information back into the equation we didn't use, so this one, and we can multiply it through. Let me show you what that looks like. We have 2 times 359 plus 3 times 419 equals 1975. So multiply, multiply, add. we go. So it's always important that when you're doing an application to write down your conclusion. So what this tells us is x is 359. So that means that a cappuccino costs three dollars 59 cents. Y we found is 419. So that means a cafe latte is 419. Let's try again. Number three, Dong Li and his Piper airplane flew an average of 121 miles per hour with the wind and 87 miles per hour against the wind. Determine the speed of the airplane in still air and the speed of the wind. So we're looking for the speed of the airplane and we're looking for the speed of the wind. Those are the two things we're looking for. So that becomes our X and our Y. So let's say let X equal the wind and let y equal the actual. That means the speed of the airplane without the wind. So we have some information. It says flew an average of 121 miles per hour with the wind. So that means if we have the speed of the plane and the speed of the wind added together, it's 121. Then it says and 87 miles per hour against the wind. So against the wind means you have the speed of the airplane minus the speed of the wind. And oops, that was 87, not 84. There we go. So now we need to solve one of these for y equals so that we can substitute it into the other. So how about we do this one? Let's make this one y equals, or you could have solved for x. That would have worked as well. 87 plus x. There we go. 
If we solve this one for y, that means we substitute this right back in here. So that's going to give us x plus, instead of our y, leave our parenthesis, 87 plus x. So simplifying here, we get 2x plus 87 equals 121, or 2x, move that say 87 over, equals 34, and x equals 17. That means the speed of the wind is 17 miles per hour. Now let's find the actual speed of the airplane. So we can use either. How about we use x plus y equals 121. Substitute the x in, we get 17 plus y equals 121. Move the 17 over by subtracting, and we get y equals 104. So let's just do a quick check, make sure that we have it. So we have y minus x. We use this one to solve for the y value. So let's use this one to check. So y is 104 minus x is 17. 104 minus 17 is 87. So that works. So we always need to write our conclusion statement. And in this case, our conclusion statement is the wind we found to be 17 miles per hour. And the actual speed of the plane we found to be 104 miles per hour. Let's try again. A truck radiator holds 36 liters of fluid. How much pure antifreeze, that means 100% antifreeze, must be added to a mixture that is 4% antifreeze to fill the radiator with a mixture that is 20% antifreeze? So we have some different pieces here. We have pure antifreeze, which is 100% antifreeze, that we are adding to 4% antifreeze to have a result of 20%. So the two pieces that we're controlling are the 4%, and the 100%. So 4%, and then our pure antifreeze is our 100%. There we go. So those are our two variables. Now we don't know how much we're using of each, but we know that when we add the number of liters of the 4% plus the number of liters of the 100%, that we're filling up our radiator. So that's going to be 36 liters. Let's see what else we can figure out. Well, we know that 4%, well, 4% is 0 0.04. So if we convert 4% to a decimal, it's going to look like 0 0.04 times however many liters we end up using, plus 100% converted to a decimal, it's just one, is going to give us a 20% mixture. So our 20% would be 0.2, And it's going to be 20% of the whole radiator. So 20% of our total amount, so 36. So these are our two equations that we can use. How about we change this one over and make that y equals 36 minus x. And then we can substitute that in right here for y. So 0.04x plus 1 times 36 minus x. I'll go ahead and do our multiplication right here. So if we multiply our 0.2 times 36, that gives us 7.2. And then we can clean this up a little bit. So if we have 0 0.04 and we subtract 1, that's going to give us 0.96. Subtract 36 from both sides, negative 0.96. So if we, because it was 0 0.04, subtract 1, negative 0.96. If we subtract 36 from both sides,
divide by our negative 0.96, we get 30. So that means we're using 30 liters of our 4%. So if x is 30, we need to figure out the value of y. We know that x plus y equals 36. So as x is 30, subtract, we get y equaling 6. So let's see if it works. If we substitute in our 30 and our 6 right here and multiply everything through, we'll get 7.2, so we'll be able to check it that way. So that means we are using 30 liters of 4% and we are using 6 liters of 100 percent. Let's try one more. So if we try one more, our last question. Here we go. How many pounds of candy that sells for two dollars fifty cents per pound must be mixed with candy that sells for $1.75 per pound to obtain six pounds of a mixture that sells for $2.10 per pound. So we have a lot of information here. We have two different kinds of candy, one that sells for $2.50 a pound, one that sells for $1.75 a pound. So those are the two things that we're considering. So we need to say let x equal and let y equal. The $2.50, so however many pounds we're going to use at $2.50, and however many pounds we're going to use of the $1.75 to make our mixture. We don't know how much we're using of each, but we know that if we add the amount of each together, we're going to get 6 pounds, so x plus y equals 6. And we also know that we want it to sell for $2.10 per pound. So this first right here, this first equation, is going to be about pounds. The second equation is going to be about the money. The money for the x is going to be 250 times however much you use of that candy. The money for the y is 175 times however much you use of that candy. And that's going to equal 6 pounds selling for 210. So this equation is all about the pounds, all about the weight. Some weight plus some weight equals six pounds. This equation is all about the money, the amount that you're going to spend for however much you use of this one and however much you use of this one to get six pounds selling for 210 a pound. So let's look at how we can simplify this down. First, let's clean it up a little bit. If I solve this one for y or x, it doesn't matter. I can substitute into this one. So I'll put this right there. So that means 250x plus 175 times 6 minus x equals 2 times 210 is, excuse me, 6 times 210 is 1260. There we go. Distributing our 175 right here. Combining our like terms right here and moving our 1050 over, and then dividing. So it looks like we need 2.8 pounds for the $2.50 candy. So if x is 2.8, let's figure out what y is. We know x plus y equals 6, so 2.8 plus y equals 6, so that gives us y equals 3.2. So what does this mean? This means that we need 
from our x value right here, we need 2.8 pounds of the candy that sells for 250, and we need 3.2 pounds of the candy that sells for $1.75.